Okay, hi there everyone uh, and welcome to uh, today's advent calendar of squeeze boxes, only it's not a squeeze box. Today I'm going to tell you a story about an instrument that, uh, well, it was uh, one man's idea and it was made for about six weeks. This is my Hona Claviola. Um, the Hona Claviola uh, is a story in itself and I'll hold it while I, I'll just quickly recap with uh, um, what I know of it. So the sort of head guy at uh, Hona's R&D department discovered a way that you could make a sound uh, using free read technology, which is the kind of read you find in harmonicas and melodians, which Hona were always the biggest sort of um, company uh, in that area for mass-produced instruments and um, they found a way of turning the free read round the other way and uh, forcing air through it um, uh, that couldn't escape any other way which set up a standing wave that then could be used to uh, form a note um, but only by use of uh, pipes. I'll quickly explain what the claviola is. That's exactly what this does. It's um, mouth blown, has a keyboard here which directs the air that you blow into a series of pipes. Um, and you probably see it better that way round. Um, uh, each one of these little metal things is on a different pipe. Um, and so yes, uh, the, uh, the, the f air that's been forced through the free read the wrong way sets up a note in these pipes and it doesn't sound like anything like um, a free read should sound like it's it's not an accordion note it doesn't sound like a harmonica note it doesn't sound like a concertina note it doesn't sound like a melodica note um, although it's quite often compared to a melodica in that it's a mouth blown keyboard instrument so this this technology was patented um, uh, but uh, there were some disputes in the patent and it, they didn't get it through until the early 1990s, I think it's like 1996 or something like that. Hona basically went into full production mode uh, once they got their patent through and uh, made a whole uh, prototype models and uh, the plan was to have them in all different sizes so you could get bass ones and you could have melodica bands and um, it was about the same time that the company was having a big restructuring and uh, the, the new management came in and saw what this department was doing and said, I'm sorry, nobody's playing instruments like that anymore. Um, you, you're going to have to stop it and concentrate on guitars and keyboards because that's all that people are playing these days. And of course, Hona still had a, a fairly modest accordion and, and uh, melodion and harmonica making business but they weren't interested in innovative new versions of uh, free read instruments so that sort of explains the sort the, the honers um Hona claviola's styling it, it, it's really you know late 80s uh, 90s looking thing um so the the series of pipes um you see down the ends of them there. It's a single moulded piece of plastic, um, which uh, I found to my cost is not a fantastic uh, material if you want to be repairing things. And this uh, this did end up being played uh, by me in Bellowhead on a couple of tracks, uh, most notably live on Black Beetle Pies, um, and it and it got a ding. It only had a soft case. I didn't have a hard case for it. Um, and it got a ding in its soft case on the tour bus and it's this bit around here is all shattered and recreated with gaffer tape and what that's led to is the pipes don't act their true length and so my bottom note or two notes um, are slightly compromised <laughs> let's put it that way uh, but uh, yeah it's um, it's got several very interesting things about it um, uh, one is that it's the only uh, sort of keyboard instrument I know of where you can also bend notes acoustically um, uh, we'll have a look at that when I'm playing it later on uh, but basically the pipes have a little a little slot cut in the back so they actually finish early 
which means that you can cover that hole and get a lower note by about a semitone. Um, but of course it does rely on you knowing which bit of the keyboard you're playing to, to cover the, the right bit of pipe. And so your left hand, if you're going to do that, has to track exactly what note you're doing on the right. And you can also use a hand like this to, to vary the quality of sound coming out because it, it sort of slightly impedes the pipe and you get a fluttering tremolo effect. But um, yeah, uh, we'll have a look inside it. I'm not going to look all the way inside because it's once you take it completely to, part, to bits, it's uh, quite difficult to put back together again. But uh, we'll have a look at it. What a fun okay, so... Uh, Here's the Hona Claviola, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, investigative surgery into this instrument to see what puts it together. So I'll take the mouthpiece off for the time being. That's just a separate piece uh, here. And we enter the instrument at the bottom here. We actually have this plastic bung, which is for... Um, like with wind instruments, I don't normally have to worry about wind instruments, but uh, um, they have uh, spit valves and things like that to stop the moisture from building up in, um, and that's similarly with this instrument, you've got a spit valve. Um, and then this lovely <laughs> 90s period uh, foam material on the bottom so that you can set it down uh, on a table or something. But then we have these screws here, and that's where we're going to look at how it comes to pieces. If I remember rightly, it's a crosshead. Yeah. That should be enough. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, slightly out of keeping with that, let's just get these three screws out. Um, the bolts, actually, rather than screws. Uh, so we have this wooden piece, which has the foam on the bottom that's attached. Um, and as I took it off, this back, uh, sorry, the front plate, which is metal, came off. And that should also release this back plate, which also features part of the, uh, the strap mechanism. But one of the straps still attaches to the, to the pipe bit here. So we'll have to keep those together for the time being. Well, let's have a look at the keyboard first. It's on the side of the piano keyboard. These are... Uh, Keys are sprung on the inside, very similar to a, a cheap synthesizer keyboard or a, um, even a piano accordion keyboard, actually. Um, but what they do is they they trigger a push um, on these levers inside this bit behind a bit of perspex. And in fact, you can see that's the wind chamber inside the perspex here, and uh, there's some residual bits of uh, condensation from me playing it there. Um, now I'm not going to take this piece of perspex off, which you need to do if you've got a sticky button or a, a problem with a spring or yeah, sometimes these notes stick on. Uh, I, I think it's possibly to do with build up of moisture in here can make it uh, stick. This is to my mind a massive design flaw because uh, as you can see these little circles here, the springs which return these levers down once the keys had the weight taken off it, each note has its own little spring and it's just a compression spring. Um, now if I were to take all this off every one of these screws that, that pushes this perspex down into a gasket layer here, um, uh, I would find the whole thing with the force of all those springs put, uh, bounces off and, and all of the springs jump off as well so it's it's a really fiddly job to to do anything to do with a sticky key but if i were to actually go in there you would be able to see the little free reeds on the other side of this valve which um that, that gets opened by the key uh there's a little free reed in there for every note and it plays it through the wrong way just as i described um, and then on the back here, there's not much more taking apart I can really do with this one. Um, you can see the other side of the keyboard mechanism there doesn't give away too much. But you can see these um, these metal sliders here, which are for, for tuning how much you want the uh, 
uh, well, you, it's just for tuning. Um, you tune the pipe to exactly the right note that you want. Um, and these little screws in here loosen them and go up and down. Um, someone's marked on with red, <laughs> red pen where they all go. I'll give you a chance to see the damaged bit at the end here, where uh, the plastic's actually um, shattered um, on some of these bits in, in the accident we had on the tour bus. And it's quite gutting, really, because there's not very much you can do about it. It's got a little chip here on this pipe as well. This plastic is very brittle. Um, and, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's uh, what the inside of a Hona Claviola looks like. So this instrument is put on using two straps, like a bit like an accordion on the front of you here, one over each shoulder. And uh, that takes you to a position where if you get the straps adjusted right, the mouthpiece is here. Um, and, uh, and the sound comes out of these pipes here. So we'll uh, just take you on, on a quick trip of what it sounds like. So that's quite an interesting noise. It's much more like a um, sort of sine wavey sound, um, like a a church organ because that's that's the kind of noise we've got going on uh, the noise is shaped by the pipes the bizarre thing is if you actually um, want to hear what the free reeds that are creating those notes sound like played normally you can suck which isn't a very sanitary thing to do on these instruments but I'll, I'll do it for science science's sake okay so that sounds like a melodica a bit now but a bit weird because it's the sound's got nowhere to go really it's uh it's being sucked in through the pipe um but the if i play the the notes i'll start on a g that's a blown note the suck note is is an f so the the, the reed that's being used to form the note is a uh, full tone below the one that's uh the note that's actually coming out um, i find that quite interesting so I'll do a little demonstration of the the way the left hand can affect the notes. Um, uh, so let's say, I'm going to try and guess where it is. Um, if we're on the G here, we'll find it. So if you actually put your thumb over the end of the pipe, once you find it, um, you can actually feel the air coming out. Um, so that allows you to, to play um, sort of bluesy little flicks. Can't remember my bellow head part for Black Beetle Pies, but that's... Um, that's what I used it for. Um, I think it's absolutely lovely for uh, playing straight chord accompaniments because it's such a pure sounding instrument. Um, in fact, uh, what I will play for you is um, I use it with uh, Jackie Oates when she does a, a, a lace telling um, radio ballad that she wrote. Um, and we use it to, to sort of introduce that naive sound of um, a hymn called Glorious Things. Uh, and it goes like this.
So there you go, the Hona Claviola. It's, um, it's an instrument not many people will have seen as it was uh, made for about two months and then it went away again. Thank you. 